Hi, everyone. My name is Max Fezlar Friedman, and I'm a second year computer science student at Northeastern University. And this is my final project for my electrical engineering class. And this project was to create a mini piano using a 4x4 matrix keypad. So the goal of this project is to interface a 4x4 matrix keypad using the D1 SOC board to generate tones and add numbers to the LED display. So this 4x4 keypad had numbers 0 to 9, letters A to D, an asterisk, and a hashtag. So when any number 0 to 9 was pressed, the corresponding number was added to the LEDs. When A was pressed, 10 was added, D11, C12, D13. When the asterisk was pressed, 14 was added to the LEDs. And finally, when the hashtag was pressed, 15 was added to the LEDs. And along with that, while the button was being pressed down, a tone was generated through the speaker. So when one was pressed, the tone C5 was played through the speaker. And that went all the way up to when the hashtag was pressed, tone C7 was played through the speaker. And when zero was pressed, because there was no LEDs incremented, there was also no tone generated. And while the keypad was being used, the student's name followed by Fall 2020 was on the seven segment displays rotating from right to left in a in continuous infinite pattern. So the hardware and software used was obviously the D1 SOC board, the speaker, along with the wire jumpers to connect it to the board, the four by four matrix keypad created by Parallax, and then Cordis Prime where the Verilog code was written and the hardware was generated and analyzed. So one of the issues that I came across during the beginning of the project was that the rotating display was showing all of the letters of the student's name on the first iteration, but afterwards uh, it started displaying random letters. So it got to the end of fall 2020, and then it, when tried to go back to the first letter of the name, it was jumbling up all the letters and the seven segments on each hex were not displayed properly. And I soon realized that this was because the index was going to a negative number, which is represented in two's complement form in Verilog. So the index wasn't retrieved correctly when trying to access which letter was displayed next. So the way I combated this was through an if conditional, which prevented it one step before going to the negative number and reset the value to the first index, getting the first letter of the new name. Another issue I had was where I had to set each column to low to read in each row and compile the 16-bit key code for every button press. And initially, this wasn't working at all. It was only reading in the first column as low. And I soon realized it's because there wasn't a delay between each column scan since their rows weren't getting enough time to update accordingly. So when adding a 10 millisecond delay between each column scan, the correct button press was read from the keypad and the correct 16-bit key code was generated, which was then used to collect the tone data and also update the LEDs accordingly. So now onto a live demo where I will show exactly how the speaker works, the keypad works, and also you'll be able to see the rotating display of the student's name. So this is the setup of the board upon running the program. As you can see, the LEDs show nothing and the seven segment display is starting to rotate. Uh, it says fall 2020 right now, but it's the, the best representation of my first and last name that I could get, and then followed by fall 2020. As you can see, the keypad is in the uh, JP1 expansion port, uh, pins 10 to 24 on the left side, and the speaker is in the JP2 expansion port. Uh, the uh, output is in the pin one and then the black wire is in the ground. So that's how it's set up. And then now we can start pressing the buttons. So um, one to nine obviously will uh, increment the LEDs by one to nine. A is 10, B is 11, C is 12, D is 13. Uh, the asterisk is 14 and the hashtag is 15. So if I start by pressing one, it increments by one, and also you probably heard the speaker. Um, the speakers generate tones increasing in the same way that the LEDs, uh, the higher LED values correspond to a higher pitch note. So one, again, I'll hold it down and you'll hear the speaker. So notice that when I held it down, the LEDs did not rapidly increase. It only increased upon initially pressing the button. And when I released, it also did not increment, but the tone was generated the entire time while pressing the button. Now, if I press two, right now the LEDs say two. So if I press two again, that's four. So the third LED will be the only thing lit up. 
And if I keep going, three will increment by three. And if I go all the way up, you'll hear the higher pitched tones. And then if I press zero, nothing will happen because no tone is generated and the LEDs didn't increase. And if you looked closely at the LEDs when I pressed all those buttons, they incremented accordingly doing uh, binary addition to be displayed on the LEDs.